Okay, this is going to be a video on how to create a navigation bar. I know for at least one of my Art 116 classes, I've already gone through this, but I thought I would record it again uh, for everybody. So what I've done here so far, I'm going to close some of these windows, is I've saved a document um, and I've created home, about, work, clients, uh, and contact. And what I need to do is create a style sheet so I can style my menu. So before I do anything here, I'm going to create that style sheet. So I'm going to go File, New, New Document, CSS. I'm going to Create. I'm going to go ahead and save it right away. Go to my USB. Art 116, my name folder, my CSS folder, and I'm just going to call it nav bar, and maybe I'll do one and save it. I'm going to go back to my HTML document, and what I need to do first is turn these lines of text into an unordered list. I need my property palette open to do that, so I'm going to open my property palette. I'm going to go Window, Properties, I'm going to select all that text and create an unordered list. Now what I need to do next is I need to put a box around these, okay, so I could integrate it into a website. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select everything here. And I'm going to go Insert, Navigation, okay. Now here, again, I could give it a second name, and it's a good idea, especially if you're going to have two navigation bars within a website, maybe they're styled a little bit differently. Maybe one set of navigation is on a white background, and another one is on a you know, dark background. In that case, you'd want the text different colors. On the black, you'd want white. On the white, maybe you'd want, want uh, black. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, call this one maybe top nav. Again, you could use an ID here. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I'm just choosing to use the class, but a lot of people use an ID for the same manner. Uh, normally classes are better used for styling something and IDs for boxes, but either way is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, again, it's going to wrap around my selection. And there I've got my box. Okay, the next thing I want to do is make sure that these are actually links. So I'm going to go ahead and select home. In the property palette, I don't have anywhere for it to go to just yet, so I'm just going to put a false ID with a pound symbol, and I'm going to do that to each of these. And one more. Okay. Now, now I want to style my navigation. So I'm going to open up my CSS designer. Okay. And as I've mentioned before, there are many ways of creating a nav bar. Mine is just one way. Uh, if you certainly do some research on the internet, you're going to find that there are tons of different ways of doing this. Uh, there's not necessarily a right way. Um, there's just many ways. Just like I said before, it's like you know many recipes to create a cake okay anyway we're gonna go ahead and style this so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target the actual uh, nav box or div so I'm gonna go ahead and oops first I need to connect my website so I'm gonna go ahead and add existing browse to that file that I saved nav bar 1 and open it and OK. okay. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and create a new rule and keep in mind that it jumped to the actual class name here. It kind of skipped over more of a generic uh, 
the more ge generic da div tag for nav. It went straight to the class. All right. First thing I think I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and give it a background color. So I'm going to go into the background properties. And I'll do a gold. All right, I'm also going to turn off my email. All right, now what I'm going to do is maybe I'll come back to styling more of that. I'm going to go on to some of the other options. Again, I'll come back to that, but that's actually just the basics now. I actually want to target the LI or the list items here. So I'm going to go ahead, just put my cursor right there and I click the add selector. Now, right now, Dreamweaver wants me to, or thinks I want to do the unordered list, the list items and the um, active link or the anchor tag. I don't want to do the A yet. So I'm going to get rid of that. I want to target the list items. I'm going to change the display to inline. So I'm in layout here and I'm going to change it to in line. Now they sit nicely on top of each other. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and change the font, font, font family, and I'll just use Gil Sands for this demonstration. Now I want to target the actual uh, links. So again, I'll just to help myself, I'm going to put my cursor right here. I'm going to get my cursors right here. I'm going to add the selector. Again, I don't, don't want all this. I actually just want to target the, um, the active links that are in that nav. That's what I want. Okay. In this case, I'm going to do um, a display we haven't talked about this, uh, this time. I'm going to change the display to something called inline block. That way, these elements are going to have the same properties as a block level element and Additionally, they'll have um, inline properties. It's kind of a hybrid of them both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under layout, display, and I'm looking for inline block right there. Okay. I'm going to get rid of the underline and that's in text, tech decoration, and none. I got rid of the, the underline. Okay, now I want to target, you know what, maybe I'm going to fix a little bit of the padding here. So I'm going to go back up to uh, the nav here. And what I'm going to do is get rid of some default margins and padding. So I'm going to go into the layout properties and I want all the margins to be zero again browsers have default margins and I want to be sure to get rid of them so I'm going to click I want all the sides so I'm going to click here and I'm going to change this to zero and they're all zero I'm going to do the same thing for padding and I click the lock here and change them all to zero okay. just going to peek in my style sheet because sometimes this lock X kind of funky. So I want to make sure that my styles were embedded and margin top. Yep. Got them all. Okay. Back to my CSS code. All right. So what I've done is that I actually want to do the list style none. So I'm going to go into list style. I'm going to go down here in the text properties here style type and I want to choose none okay you might not see any effect with that just yet but it, you'll show it'll show up later all right so right now the styles I have incorporated are the background color got the margins zero the padding zero and I've done list style none maybe I want to center the text so I'm going to go back to the text properties and I'm going to line center Okay, I might as well actually give this nav a width. So I'm going to come up here into the layout properties and I'll make the width 1000. There we go. 
All right. Now what I want to do is I got all that. That. I want to actually add some padding to those links. Again, since it's inline block now, I can also apply block level properties, which means margin and padding. And I'm going to add some padding of 10 pixels. Okay, they're separating up here, right and left. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and preview. And save. Save again. There I've got a nav bar. 